Okay, so the other day my air conditioner started making some weird noises and um, it turned out that the motor right here, which is the motor for the cooling fan for the air compressor coils, um, was going bad and it made like a ball bearing sound and it made a screech and it would stop within a second or so. Uh, it was bound up, frozen. The smart and careful mechanic or do-it-yourselfer will shut off both this and they will also shut off the circuit back at their circuit breaker. This is a pretty old uh, air conditioner, 2002, so I figured it was about time to replace either the entire thing or the motor, but I figured I'd give it a quick try. So I uh, pulled it apart and pulled the motor out and the motor looks like this right here okay so there's the motor and there's the four bolts on the top which uh, you can see there they hold it to the frame that holds it in the center there so those are the four bolts on the center and I mistakenly thought based on some YouTube videos that these were perhaps oiling holes so anyway I took it out I spun the fan a bunch I put a little WD-40 in here and out came some crud I put some oil in there put it back together and it worked for a little bit but meanwhile I called the air conditioning company because it was definitely going uh, they took an amperage reading on it um, they checked out some other things and they said it's definitely bought the farm that's the end of it uh, might work for a couple days might work for a couple weeks but uh, a new one was going to be about $700 installed of course I took a quick look online and saw that I could buy the motor for $175 so um, it was tough to fork over six or seven hundred dollars uh, to replace the motor anyway in the meantime I got onto YouTube and I saw one guy who I will link to in the video who actually tells you how to properly um, check and re-oil a motor like this a motor that is not designed for re-oiling but uh, one important thing here is these are not oiling holes why would they have oiling holes way out here when the shaft is here? So these are not oiling holes. They are for condensate that's in the motor to drip out. If they were oiling holes, well, sure, they'd have oiling holes on the other end there where the other end of that shaft goes. So those are not oiling holes. There is no oiling holes in them from the factory. They're pretty much meant to either be replaced in full or you'd have to take it into a, uh, a motor electric motor shop you'd have to remove it luckily this one was plug and play and have it redone but however the proper way to do it as shown by this other gentleman on youtube who is a professional hvac is to remove the four long bolts these are the bolts that go through from here to here and that's the first step and I will show you myself removing at least one of them. It surely did loosen up. If you have better tools, you'll do a better job than I do, but the real key here is just getting it loose enough. You can always spray a little WD-40 on there, and then there we go. Seems to have loosened up. Okay. number one is off and these bolts as you can see go all the way through once you take them off make sure you put the nut back on so you don't lose it okay so before you take all the bolts out make yourself a, a mark that's probably a scratch on the motor housing like along here and then match it up with a scratch on the rear and the front casting this way when you put these back together you'll know to line up these marks and then your screw holes, your long screws will go right through. You won't have a problem matching them up later. Now the key is that you want to remove this front and rear of the motor, front and rear castings. Uh, that can be done in a number of ways, usually just by shaking it loose or sort of tapping it with something. I can see it actually 
coming apart already there. And there she goes. So those castings are set onto the sheet metal, you know, sheet metal housing of the unit. There it is. And if I pull that out, boy, there's the whole armature of the motor and the coil windings and everything in there. And it actually looks quite clean in there. Wipe it, but it's very clean. Always like to clean things a little better. Same thing on the rear, it'll either wiggle off or you can just try some of the same little methods of tapping it with something and setting a little screwdriver in. Ah, there comes the other end off. Okay, so there's um, you won't lose which end of the motor is which because the lead end is the rear end. That's where the leads come out here. You won't lose which end of the motor is which because the lead end is the rear end. That's where the leads come out here. Okay, so in order to oil this motor, obviously you're going to wipe all the big grease and stuff like that off of it. But actually inside on this front, we will remove this too. Around in here, there's a whole piece of felt. It's like a piece of cottony felt that's set all around in there. And basically, you'll just take some three-in-one or machine or very light oil. Don't use a detergent oil, use a non-detergent oil, but three-in-one is perfect. In fact, the three-in-one, usually your sewing machine uh, type of uh, oil will say on it, for motors a quarter horsepower and larger so you're going to just want to just go around in there and soak it don't have it like running out all over the motor but soak it wipe the shaft the rear one also you're going to go in there and do the same thing you're going to soak around that um, felt that's in there and basically what happens is that felt gives away little by little gives up its oil to the shaft keeps the shaft going and uh, since the factory job ended up lasting for 15, 16 years. I'm not gonna to worry too much about it. Okay, so there's one of the, Let's put the other three in them and uh, remount your fan and hope that your shaft spins. I can see that this shaft is spinning Somewhat just like a new motor would. You put it back together, it should stop all its screeching, and it should be good for quite a few number of years. Uh, if you don't want to take any chances on rebuilding it, you can purchase on eBay or on Amazon or from some separate HVAC online places a replacement motor. It can be a plug compatible one. Um, or you can wire it in. Obviously you should have some idea what you're doing and all the different circuit breakers and things should be off before you take it apart. Good luck! If you do end up replacing the motor make sure you get your phone or a camera and get yourself a nice picture of the um, label that goes on the motor. Some of them are uh, clockwise, some of them are counterclockwise. Obviously, you got to depend on which end you're looking at it, whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, in this case, I decided to put a new motor in there, but strangely enough, the new motor is starting to sound worse than the old motor. Maybe it just needs to get broken in, but I'll keep this one around, which has worked for a week and a half while I waited for that one, and it spins perfectly. It would seem like it probably has years left in it. Um, these bolts that stick the long bolts that stick out one end that often provides the mounting for this motor like underneath the screen to protect it from leaves and other things getting in there there's four cap nuts and those cap nuts are what holds it up to the frame which stabilizes the motor so and in this case this motor um, is counterclockwise the fan speed is counterclockwise it pushes air up so basically, it's sucking air into all the condenser coils and then pushing it up out of here. So uh, here's wishing I get another year, two, three, four out of this air conditioner before I have to spend about six grand and get the whole thing replaced. So 
Bye for now, and I hope you learned something from this video.